Hello there, this is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake and we are starting a new series called Humans of Out Motorsports. And we're starting that today with a series of pandemic Porsches. On the one side, I've got a 2007 Porsche Boxster S and on the other, I've got a 2007 Porsche Cayman S. Now these are two cars owned by two of our followers and we are excited to start sharing our followers' cars with the rest of you. So, the question is, all things equal, is one of these two Porsches preferable to the other? Both of these are the 987 generation of Porsche. Porsche started with their Boxster in the mid-1990s, and it was kind of the first entry-level Porsche that was really right up there with the 911 as far as appeal and capability. All of the earlier entry-level Porsches were really desirable to certain types of people, but then there were a lot of people who just had to have the 911, and the Boxster kind of changed that narrative. So we started with the Boxster in the mid 90s and this era of Boxster is the second generation called the 987. Now this car came out in 2005 and then a couple years later, Porsche added the Cayman, which is more or less a hardtop Boxster. Now these are both considered the 987 generation of cars and these are early 987s. Like I said, they came out in 2005 and this generation ran until 2012. Porsche did offer an updated 987 starting in the 2009 model year that you will hear referred to as the 987.2. These are considered dot one cars. Now both of these cars are the S, which has a 3.4 liter flat six. The pistons punch at each other a little bit like that. Subaru Boxer engine is laid out very similarly if you know those. And both of these engines are the same. They make 295 horsepower and about 252 pound feet of torque. And while Porsche did offer both of these cars with their excellent PDK dual clutch automated manual transmission, both Joey and Matthew chose to go with the six speed manual transmission. So with all that said, let's meet Joey, meet Matthew, talk about why they bought these cars and why they bought them in the middle of a global pandemic. And then we'll take them for a little ride and see how they are back to back. First up, meet Joey. He picked out his 2007 Porsche Cayman S in midnight blue metallic back in July. So my first project car was an E36 M3 that I bought back in college. It was a 1995. I bought it in about 2009 with 140,000 miles on it. And uh, it was probably one of the cheapest M3s on the market at the time. And I bought it because it was bright yellow and, you know, super loud and had a ton of appeal. Uh, but I honestly had no idea what I was getting into. It was really a huge learning opportunity looking back. At the end of the day, it was a car with a lot of miles on it. Um, still needed a lot of things to work through. And I just kind of, you know, ran out of energy and the desire to go back in and keep replacing parts. And, you know, after you've owned a car for 10 years, you start to get a little bit of burnout. And while I was working on the M3, I was daily driving a few different GTIs. I started with a 2009 Mark V, um, then I bought a 2015 Mark VII, and then a 2018 Mark VII and a half. Um, but when the pandemic rolled around, all of a sudden I found myself not needing to drive to an office anymore. I didn't really see a reason to continue owning my GTI. I'd already sold the M3 a few months before that. Thought I was kind of getting out of the project car world, but with a lot more time on my hands and you know, all of a sudden wanting something to do, I uh, decided to start looking for this. Back when I was in college, I uh, got to work at a Porsche shop for a couple of summers, just as like the, the lot boy and the detail guy, car wash boy. So I spent a lot of time around these cars when they were, you know, a year, two, three years old and always really admired them. So they've really flattened out in value in the past maybe five or so years. And I think it's a great opportunity to buy one now without worrying about losing too much more in depreciation. And you can put a little bit of work into one without worrying that you're going to lose. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. You'll lose everything that you put into it. So I've always been the guy that kind of likes to go through and mess with and massage and bother everything. It's a Florida car. It, I think it spent most of its time outside, probably a daily driver. So there's a ton of hazing and damage to the clear coat. I've gone through and done a couple of paint corrections. I had the wheels powder coated when I replaced the tires. I just installed the FVD Brombacher exhaust. I have the sole performance exhaust tips. I put an AFE intake in just to change the sound a little bit. I've got the numeric the racing shifter cables. I have the function first shift right rebuild kit 
to remove a little bit of slop from the shifter assembly itself. I went ahead and updated the head unit just so that I could have CarPlay and a backup camera because I got used to that in my other cars. I had to replace one of the headlights because of some wiring damage that I found in it and I polished out the other side. I installed these little grills here that just keep anything from getting sucked into the intakes and the radiator covers on the front of the car. I polished the brake calipers and replaced the Porsche stickers. I think it might be the first car that I, uh, I think I've done right, so far at least. Next up, here's Matthew with his Arctic Silver 2007 Porsche Boxster S that he picked up back in October. Now is just timing. You know, pandemic is a coincidence. Um, but uh, the, the Porsche, you know, I drove like a 781 Cayman last year and I fell in love. It's pretty much a perfect car. Um, and so I, I kind of made up my mind that a 987 was going to be in the books. Joey bought one and I drove it and I pretty much started putting every duck in a row um, to find one. I test drove a couple of them before. I kind of had my sights set on a Cayman S. And then I decided, you know, after test driving a boxer that, you know, the tops are so well done. When you put the top down, you get so much more exhaust noise. I, I included the boxer S to open up some options. In the past, I've had a 1999 Mazda Miata. Um, I've had E36s. I have a lot of experience with a lot of other cars, but most of them have, have all been um, slow car fast. Um, and, you know, I've never really had a faster vehicle. Um, and I currently daily drive a 1989 Volvo 740 wagon. So, um, you know, I really wanted something that could exhilarate me, be a lot more thrilling, um, but I also wanted a car where I didn't have to buy it and put another $5,000 into it in terms of mods to make it what I want. I wanted a car fresh out of the box that was just built well, has good handling, and doesn't need anything. And that turned out to be a Porsche Boxster S. It's been awesome. I bought it with 70,000 miles maybe a month and a half ago. I've put about 4,000 on it so far. And it's been fantastic. So they did nothing but gas and uh, it does need some tires. It needs some brakes. Came with the sole performance exhaust, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's so great. I live at 7,000 RPMs in this car. All right, so first up, this is Matt's 2007 Boxster S. And like he mentioned, this one has the sole performance cap back exhaust. Matt's car has the upgraded headlights. He's got HID headlights with headlight washers but he has the base sound system. So just a little quirk there of how these cars are optioned. But um, like I said, they're both six speeds, they're both the S, so pretty comparable there. And put those windows up for the sake of chatting. That power delivery is just nice and steady. You know, these are naturally aspirated cars, um, kind of of an era gone by at this point. Most cars are moving to turbocharging, and uh, it's just nice because the power builds down low, and it, it builds it all the way up to redline, all the way to fuel cut, whatever you want to call it. Um, now, these are cable-shifted cars, uh, which is more reminiscent of a front-wheel drive car in a lot of cases, but both the Boxster and Cayman are mid-engines. The engine is truly right behind you. You do have a frunk and a trunk. It can be a little difficult for the sake of maintenance, but you know, they do offer some pretty good accessibility there either way. Even with the cable shifter, uh, Matthew's car here has 73,000 miles. His shifter has never been rebuilt and it does feel pretty good. Joey's car, we'll get to in a minute, uh, has that upgraded rebuilt shifter. And it's nice, like Matthew said, these feel like Miata XLs. They, uh, they really want to turn in with the engine being right behind you. It's 100% it's between the axles and it, it, the car really wants to pivot, which is just so fun. You know, you don't feel like it's got a very heavy nose because frankly it doesn't. And uh, it, it just wants to turn in. And compared to the 911, which is rear engine and has that engine hanging out kind of behind the back axle to a point, uh, these cars are considered very well balanced and fairly easy to drive. You can still get lift off oversteer if you're mid-corner and you get a little spooked or need to lift throttle and you come off too abruptly or too much, but um, still, still easy enough to drive and, and throwing it through a corner, like Matthew said, there's just a lot of tire, there's a lot of grip, it does like to rotate. 
And it's nice too, the, the pedal position is nice, the layout of everything in here is nice, the car feels very premium. These were fairly expensive when they were new back in 2007. Uh, this Boxster, I believe, carried about a $60,000 MSRP at the time. And uh, as with any Porsche, you know, however you option it, you could have added a ton of money and options to these cars. But uh, both this Boxster and Joey's Cayman are more or less what you would have found on a dealership lot as far as, you know, options are concerned, color combos are concerned. They're not anything too, too wild. Uh, neither car has PASM, which is the adaptive suspension. I don't think it's necessarily a, uh, a must-have or a deal breaker if you can't find a car with PASM. It's undoubtedly better for track use. Uh, it does add that sport button, which would change the throttle mapping, among other things. But um, I, I find the cars without PASM and without the sport chrono package to be really good to drive. So if you want one, sure, you can look for it, but you're, you're not going to be missing out on anything if you just get a, a Cayman S or a Boxster S kind of as it is. Now, as far as the convertible bit of the Boxster itself versus the Cayman, it's a personal preference. Obviously, looks are subjective. The Cayman has some better hips. It's got a little bit better profile to me um, versus the Boxster with the top up. It's just a, a more cohesive looking car. But like Matthew said, you can't see it when you're in it. And with the roof down and that soul cat back howling away behind you with the song of the flat six people, it's uh, it's really a nice combo. And especially if you get it up with some jersey walls or something that really reflects the sound back at you if you're in a tunnel or anything with the roof down, you've got that engine howling away right behind you both with intake and exhaust. And it's just cool to have nothing in the way. If you're a convertible person, this is a good convertible. It's a nice size. It's manageable, it's easy to drive. It's uh, it's pretty nimble, light on its feet. Like Matthew said, it's you know under 3,000 pounds. And the soft top is really well done. It's really well insulated. So it's not gonna be like, like the Miata that he had, the NB Miata, where it was just kind of this thin vinyl or cloth roof with not a lot of insulation. And in the very early NA Miata days, a plastic back window. These cars are not that. They've got a glass back window with defrost. The soft top is nice and insulated. You could drive one of these with the proper tires in the winter with the roof up and be comfortable. And frankly, you could turn on the heated seats and crank the heat and go hoon around in the snow with the roof down if you were so inclined. So really, really like the Boxster here. I'm gonna hop in the Cayman next, but truthfully, I don't know if I were picking between the two, all things equal. I don't know which one I'd buy. All right, so now we're in Joey's 2007 Cayman S. So like I said, this is the hard top of the Boxster. It's a different body shape. It's, it's kind of a hatchback. You can open the back here and put quite a bit of larger items in the back, which is nice. And you still have the front trunk, lovingly called the frunk as well. Now Joey's has a different cat back movement. also redid the shifter and shift cables to kind of bring back that factory fresh feel and, and even sharpen it up just a little bit more compared to the stock 53,000 mile setup because you know as, as everything ages you get a little slop and it's nice to tighten it back up. Now as far as the Cayman versus the Boxster I've covered most of how these cars are to drive in, in Matt's Boxster but the, uh, the Cayman itself you know, I do like, you've got a little more headroom with the roof in this car than you do in the Boxster with the top up. I, I didn't show me driving with the top up in the Boxster, but I've driven that car with the roof up. And uh, I fit, but it's a little tighter. Whereas the Cayman, I've got a lot more headroom. And uh, I think that might lend itself to a little more comfy cruising if I were to take longer drives in either car. You definitely don't hear the same sort of exhaust with the hard top of this car, but regardless. It sounds pretty good. They both sound pretty good. And that flat six sound is great. It's a, a different sound than you would get from a V6 or inline six. And it is really cool having it all right behind your head. Like I said, intake and exhaust are right there and it's, it's truly just under some carpeted covers. So really enjoy the noise there. And the drivetrain, it's just a nice engine. It builds all this power and, and it makes it from idle to redline. It just it's kind of swells and it doesn't fall off like you would have a, a power fall off in, uh, in a turbo car. So really fun. It, I think it makes for a little bit better balanced vehicle compared to turbo cars, you know, some of the, the more modern boxers and Caymans switch to a turbocharged 
four cylinder, and uh, I think they're going back to a six cylinder on the newest ones uh, for a variety of reasons. But in any case, I think even with how well insulated the roof is on the Boxster, you have to really want the convertible to to purchase that. I think if you're on the fence and you're not a convertible person that will have the top down every single day unless it's raining very heavily or under 20 degrees out, you'll probably end up in a Cayman and that's not a bad thing. I really, really love this Cayman. But I really think that if it was my money, I might end up in the Boxster because I'm just such a convertible person and I do... I do enjoy them so much, and the Boxster is just so good at being a convertible. But then I look back at the Cayman and it looks so good. And I think we've now gone through this entire video and I've not come to any sort of decision. So that just really uh, shows how well done both of these cars are. And it's a good thing that I'm not putting my money on the line right now because I truly don't know which one I would choose. Really, really don't. All right, and that is it for this first episode of Humans About Motorsports. Thank you so much for coming along with us today. As always, if you like what we're up to, please take a second, subscribe to the channel, and of course, give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram. There will, of course, also be a written version of this whole series on outmotorsports.com, so please head on over there. And if you'd like to support us with a t-shirt or a decal purchase, head on over to the website as well. We'll link all of that in the description below. We really appreciate the support with what we are doing. Until next time, please drive safe, be well, and we'll see you again soon.